Uncertainty and error in science is actually a really useful tool. People hear the word error, they think it's a bad thing. But actually, error tells you where you are and how well you know a measurement. So it comes hand in hand with any answer you have to any question. In what I do, in atmospheric science, uh, we have measurements um, that we take, and we have models that we use to process the data. And we have an error in the measurement, and we have an error in the model. And between them, we're able to essentially create a sphere of uncertainty. And we know the answer is somewhere within this sphere. Um, we know it's not over here, we know it's, it's somewhere here. So we can give, a, give an answer and we know how well we know it. So it's actually a very, very important thing. An example is if you, have, if you take five people from your class, one of them has blonde hair. Can you say from that, one in five people has blonde hair? What's wrong with, what's wrong with that conclusion? You may not have time to look at all the people in the world and see what colour their hair is. But what you could do is you could go to a few other schools in your area and you could see, take five people from each class and how many of them have blonde hair in your selection of five people. And you may find that most of the time it's true, in which case you know, you have confidence that your, your solution is a good one, that one in five people has blonde hair, that might be a good, a good answer and you have more confidence in your, in your, um, in your conclusion. However, you may find that that's hardly ever true, in which case you know it's not a very good conclusion to draw from your initial, your initial sample. Another time when uncertainty and error is very useful is in weather forecasting. So the way weather forecasting is done is you have a model of the atmosphere and you run it many, many times. And each time you run it, you change the initial conditions ever so slightly because you cannot represent the real atmosphere perfectly in a model. And whichever you take, you take all the answers, all the, all the model runs that you've done, forecasting the weather, and you find where they all cluster. And that way you know, in this region of clustering, to within a certain uncertainty, that this is probably what the weather will be like tomorrow. If they don't cluster, if they go in very different places, you don't have very much confidence in your weather prediction. But if they all, all converge in, a, in, a, in, a, in the same region, then you have a lot of confidence in it. So your uncertainty is relatively small. So we couldn't do modern foreca weather forecasting without um, these concepts of uncertainty and estimates of error on our measurements.